guys, Jay here. Welcome to Models and Memories Weekly, episode 33. Models and Memories is a show about nothing and it's filmed in front of a live studio audience. And stay tuned all the way till the end to see a montage of painted minis courtesy of the EOB Complete community. This is a show where I talk about painting, modeling, and wargaming experiences from the week and I end every episode with a story. Now you might be thinking to yourself, Jay, you put out three YouTube videos a week and you stream every single night. How could you have more to say? Well, I do. And here goes. This week, I had a lovely game of Kill Team. I played a arguably silly list. I played 10 Sisters Repentia, all sisters with swords and six up saves. And this should have been a disaster, but it wasn't. Uh, I did lose in points because I think just my first time playing them, I wasn't quite sure what they were capable of and I missed out on most of my secondary objectives. Um, but they actually performed really, really well. I was playing against the Commando Orcs from Octaris, and I killed all but two Orcs before he killed all of my sisters. But it was turn four. They went all the way. And that, I think, is the mark of how good Kill Team is right now. That you can kind of put any two lists against each other, and they, the game functions. That didn't used to be true in old Kill Team. In old Kill Team, I would definitely not want to play any list versus any other list because uh, you'll lose sometimes for sure in the list building stage. But new Kill Team seems to be playing really, really well. My sisters were dying left, right, and center because not having access to shooting is tough. Um, their swords are crazy good in melee. The sisters were plenty of chain swords. And they have a wonderful rule that I forget the name of where every time they would lose a wound, you roll a d6. And on a five or a six, that wound is not lost. And so it leads to wonderfully hilarious moments where one time my sister with one wound let remaining took 18 damage. And I had to roll 18 dice in the hopes that all of them would be a five or a six. And I think that that is just lovely. And even except for silly cases like that, it really does help though, because often your opponent's weapons will do just a tiny bit worse than they would think. And that is super helpful because often weapons will do six damage or even seven damage sometimes and it'll one shot your guy, but all of a sudden they're only doing five damage. And that little, that little bit helps a ton to keep your sisters alive. I really, really dig it. But I do think that the the optimum build is probably going to be five regular battle sisters and then five sisters of Pentia. And so I'm excited to paint more sisters. But speaking of kill team, I would like to discuss kill team a little bit more because frankly, I don't know if I'm liking what I'm seeing. And specifically that is from the wargaming community. Uh, while I've, I've been putting together lots and lots of kill team lists and I've been joining Facebook groups and I've been asking people online, uh, uh, list building ideas and uh, ideas about how rules are meant to function and stuff. And literally half of stuff, whenever I ask a question about like, hey, how does this, uh, you know, lurk in the shadows rule, I'm a little confused about the order of operation. Literally half of the responses will be, well, yeah, well, the game just sucks. Or, eh, who cares? Just wait for the real game to come out in a few months. Or, eh, everything is awful. And it's really kind of, it's really kind of yucking my yum. I think, I think that uh, uh, everybody who, especially those who have not played the game, should be a little bit more measured in their criticism. Because right now, it seems like this game is really getting dunked on. And I get it, because Games Workshop is a little bit of a butt that doesn't ever show any transparency whatsoever. But uh, I do think that this is the best 40k game that exists. I really do. I have played 6th edition, I've played 7th edition, I've played 8th edition, and I'll get around to 9th edition. And all of these games, what are they really? If you really break them down into their elements, they are games that allow you to purchase and customize models to your heart's content and then provide you with rules to make them fight so that you can be immersed in the world of 40k and in this grim dark combat. But in all of those games, in, in all of those different editions of 40k, I've always felt like the game and the story are completely separate. Space Marines don't feel like Space Marines. 10 Space Marines firing on orcs should instantly wipe them out 100% of the time and the orcs shouldn't even be able to touch them. But in reality, it's like, oh, I killed four orcs, you killed a Space Marine, oh, dee dopey. But in Kill Team, when now that things have tons and tons of wounds, now that every weapon is unique, uh, things really feel like they should. Space Marines are large and in charge. They can do more actions than anyone else. 
They can shoot better than anyone else. Their bolt guns can kill really easily. For the very first time, I feel like Space Marines feel like Space Marines when I put them down on the table. And I get really excited when I put down my five guys and I see a sea of enemies in front of me. And I know that I'm just gonna get to cut through them. But my enemies are gonna have a chance if they play all of their if they play all their stratagems and they do all their little tricks and techniques, they have a chance of taking out my five guys. And 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 it creates a, just a it's just a fun game, and I really appreciate it. I think that this is the best 40k game that I have played from Games Workshop. And I want to talk about the current things that are going on in Kill Team. It's only two months old. This game is so new, you guys. Like, nobody out there has played that many games. I've only played, like, six six games, and uh, I've enjoyed every single one of them. But I want to talk a little bit about the criticisms that are being levied, levied at this game. Some of them warranted, and I feel some of them a little bit exaggerated. I think the biggest one, and the most obvious one, is the separation between the Index armies and the, uh, like, dedicated armies. You've got... Uh, the game dropped with Octaris, which came with Krieg, uh, with veteran guardsman rules and or commando rules that are separate from the greenskins and guardsman rules that are in the compendium. But they do not replace. It's not like you would never ever touch a greenskins army from the compendium because commandos are just so much better. I have played compendium armies versus the, the real armies and they are pretty well balanced. If anything, the index armies are slightly stronger because they don't have as many individual things like medics, spotters, and uh, and snipers. And all of those rules, you kind of have to know what you're doing and really list build and list tailor to pull off all the little tricks. Because if you're not pulling off all those tricks, you're going to get stomped by Space Marines, for sure. So I almost feel like there's two ways to play. One of them favors somebody who wants to try many, many different things, the index armies. If you want to say, I want to play Dark dark Elves today, and I'm just going to grab them, I'm going to grab some witches, and I'm going to sit down and play, Index has got you covered. The list building is simple, it's, it's, it's precise, you still get some good flavor with your stratagems and your tactical ploys and your gear, and but you're, it's all done during the game. There's not as much list building as there was in previous versions of the game, and I appreciate that. But if you do want, you know, to sit down the night before and to really go over your tactics and your stratagems, I would suggest picking up maybe the Veteran Guardsman or the Krieg, or the Veteran Guardsman of the Orcs, or maybe the new Chalnath and Tau, because I suspect that they're going to be exactly the same way. But when, when the Sisters Novitiates come out, I am pretty darn sure they're not going to replace Battle Sisters and uh, Repentia and Argoflagellants, but who's taking Argoflagellants? Uh, their Argoflagellants are fine, but I like Repentia better. But, um, they're not replacing, they're adding two. Now there's, there's, th there's two ways to play. There is the Index rules, and there is the Made for Kill Team rule. And I think that every faction is probably going to get a Made for Kill Team box. Maybe even multiple boxes, depending on what things are. I mean, the Novitiates are a new thing. They're Sisters of Battle Scouts, essentially. And it'd be really cool to maybe down the road get, like, a box of Space Marine Scouts built for Kill Team, and then maybe even another thing, which is like a box of Terminators for Kill Team. New Kill Team gives us the opportunity to, to get anything, really. Whereas old Kill Team, you were stuck with the models available for Big 40k. Now Kill Team is kind of just open to whatever whatever the Games Workshop game designers come up with, which I think is really exciting. But no, there are not real rules and fake rules or holdover rules or getcha buy rules. They're, they're all available rules and they're all good. Although the index is horribly overpriced. Another thing that has got people worried about Kill Team is the White Dwarf rules. We've seen White Dwarf rules for the Adeptus Mechanicus in the Hunter Clade. And these rules uh, are the same models. You've got uh, Skitari, Rangers, and the Sycorans. It's the same models, but they are organized much more like the Veteran Guardsmen where you can take a few of each, and they each have abilities that they don't have in the index. And I bet that once again, we'll see these types of rules come out for every army, but again, I don't think that they're replacing the index. It's another way, it's another rule set that you can use. And remember, the one important thing about all of these uh, supplemental rules is you don't need them. 
if you're play if you're friends and you all have the index and that's all you got you're set if one of you down the line picks up a white dwarf you're still set because you don't need to be keeping up with every single new thing you honestly shouldn't i think you should just use what you got i definitely don't think anybody should wait until they until they get something in white dwarf or wait until games Workshop comes out with a double box because uh as we all know games workshop and communication who knows when anything is coming out so i would say if you think that this game seems interesting and you want to hop on board hop on board but the white dwarf rules are interesting but i don't think we're seeing anything new i mean it's the same three types of units that you can bring in the index we're definitely not seeing what some people speculated that the white dwarf rules were going to be bringing back the list building that was available in old kill team where there was points and you could buy you know one skitari commander and then a ranger commander and then a sikaran commander and then a this commander and a that commander and you can put them all and you can list tailor and you can bring eight plasma cavaliers that is not coming back that is not what we've seen in this the hunter clade and i kind of hope it doesn't come back to kettle team i think i think points i don't think points were that good a thing i i i am okay with points vanishing and i'm definitely okay with loadouts being based on the options available in the box because boy oh boy was it frustrating to very carefully figure out okay i'm allowed to take a plasma gun a combi plasma a plasma pistol and two more plasma guns time to go to ebay and hope that somebody is selling that stuff i think that that is a little poopy and i'm super okay with that because now i'm reading the compendium and i'm like oh my gosh i'm reading this and i really want to play dark elder i think that's the second time i've said that take notes i like uh, the dark elder look cool but now i can just go buy a box of witches done i don't need to track down extra whips i don't need to track down extra extra razor nets i am good to go and have a good time playing this war game and the last thing i've seen levied against this game is that it is horribly imbalanced we're only two months in and one army has already gotten a nerf and that is true adeptus custodies have been nerfed they used to have four action points available to them now they have three uh, it is a fairly big change for them, but the Custodians are still pretty, like, disgustingly powerful with a lot of their special abilities and stratagems. I think that it'll be a good nerf that'll bring them back down instead of, because they kind of ran away with it, but they were the only army really to run away with it. Uh, everything else had a pretty good win-loss rate based on the very, very limited numbers we've seen from uh, some of the events that have taken place for this new Kill Team game, but remember, two months old literally we have like 13 data points for Kroot. it's just not enough to know yet and frankly it seems like most armies are doing pretty well i mean in old in old kill team some armies barely existed like sisters of battle and Kroot, and uh, some armies just ran away with it like tau and guard and space marines had far uh, 10 times as many options as any other faction and they sucked for the entire three years of that game Ah, oh, Space Marines are so bad. I remember, because they died so easy. Old Kill Team stuff would die so easy. And I remember sitting there being like, oh, if my guns don't go off, turn one and two, I lose. It was, it was literally a mantra of Nick. If an orc dies turn one, he loses the game. Doesn't seem like it's that bad, big a deal anymore because there's no morale. It's not as punishing. You can actually kind of sacrifice guys in order to give you victory points or to gum up your opponents. I think I think this new game is sweet. But lastly, and I think what has probably been the biggest turnoff for people, I brought it up a little bit here and there, but the list building. When people got the new rules, they looked at them and they saw, they saw in a similar layout to Kill Team 2018, they saw, you know, Necron Warriors, n you know, generic stats, gun movement characteristics and then they saw you know one special rule and that was it and they're like oh this sucks there's nothing to list building i'm allowed to take five necron warriors and then i'm allowed to take either four immortals or four death marks that sounds like garbage not interested but what almost everybody missed out on is because and they missed out on this because you really it doesn't come into play until the game but in old kill team, it was all about the list building. You did all of your list building and then you sat down to play. Now in kill team 21, you start list building really when you're playing the game because you have strategic ploys, tactical ploys and war gear. And the, what's nice about the new war gear is that it is not beholden to what your model is modeled with. You can bring smoke grenades, grenades. Mo all factions have unique war gear. 
uh, that you can purchase with 10 available points. Every army gets 10 points to spend right before the game begins. And you get to know the mission and your opponent, which really helps. Sometimes if you're Space Marines, you're gonna want uh, purity seals, which give you free dice rerolls. But maybe if you're Space Marines, you're gonna use all 10 of your equipment points to give everybody grenades, because it's gonna be really important to have that blast weapon available to you. Now, that is kind of where the list building comes into play. Deciding, ooh, maybe I'm gonna go on, I'm gonna be wanting to use witches for this mission be instead of Cabalite warriors, because the witches are really gonna be able to take advantage of this strategic trait. Maybe I'll pop this strategic plate early in the game, and that will allow me to get the movement I need to do all the things I wanna do. And, but maybe another mission will be like, hmm, I'm really gonna wanna use the shooting stratagems that are gonna help my Cabalite warriors. They're gonna, I'm gonna need to bring a lot more firepower if I'm gonna be able to complete this mission. That is really where the strategy and the decisions come in. So yes, you're not gonna be, you're not gonna have the fun of reading a list and being like, hmm, how do I get two Meltas in this army? It's a lot more like, you kind of have to know the game and how it plays so that you can really be like, okay, if I want to really go with a lot of objective grabbing secondary objectives, what, which of my kill teams am I gonna wanna bring? Am I gonna wanna bring a lot of shooting? Am I gonna wanna bring a lot of fighting? Am I gonna wanna bring a mixture? I think, and I think, I think uh, that is, that is where that list building has gone. And I think a lot of people missed it because you have to play the game to find it. It's not just in the points costs anymore. It really is in the, the fine tuning in, in the gameplay, which I think is great because it makes the game more fun. I've learned so much in my games of what to do and what not to do. Whereas I felt like in Kill Team 2018, what I was learning was don't take the missile launcher cause it'll miss. Always take the heavy bolter. So my missile launcher guy goes off to the side, never to be seen again. I feel like those were the decisions I was making in Kill Team 2018, where now it's much more like, hmm, am I wanna, gonna want more bodies? Am I gonna want less bodies? Am I gonna wanna castle up? Am I gonna wanna play really aggressively? Yeah, uh, uh, spoiler alert, you wanna play really aggressively. Uh, I really, really am appreciating what this new kill team is bringing to the table. I I understand though the frustrations of this is not the same game at all. If you were like really down for Kill Team 2018, this game is completely different. And I that can totally rustle some feathers. I get it. But I think that this, but with this new kill team, I think it, uh, it is it's okay to criticize and there are things to criticize, but maybe be a little bit just be a little bit more measured in your criticism, especially if you haven't played the game yet. Remember this game, two months old, maybe a year down the road, we will discover that it is a complete mess. But right now, it seems pretty solid. But in other Games Workshop related news, they surprised us all with a little bit of new merchandise, including what we've all been asking for, scented candles. Yes, scented candles for 40K are finally here. I know we've been waiting anxiously for them and uh, it's, Hilarious. I, it's, uh, it's so great that they're scented candles. Number one, it makes no sense. And number two, it's really, really, really silly. The, the scents are, uh, cat chan potpourri. <laughs> oh my God, I just picked the best one right there to read. Ah, oh, cat chan potpourri, I might need to get that. <laughs> Uh, Dark Angels, Tallow, Toxicrine Spores, Parama, uh, Tau, Ether Tau Ethereal Pheromones, might need to get that one too, and the Slanesh Sporific Musk. God damn, I did not read the names before this. <laughs> these are amazing. You know what? I'm completely turned around. I was about to poop all over these candles, but I think that they're awesome. I think that these are amazing. Uh, <laughs> I'm very excited for Katachan Potpourri. And uh, yeah, 10 out of 10, knocked it out of the ballpark on the candles. But really what I wanted to discuss was the Christmas sweaters, the Warhammer 40,000 Christmas sweaters. These are kind of cool. I actually like these a lot. They're not particularly grim dark, but I'm okay with that because Christmas is not particularly grim dark, although it can be. I remember that movie Krampus. I love that movie, but uh, the sweaters actually look kind of dope. They remind me of a lot of the Star Wars ones we've seen. There's a gremlin sweater that looks a lot like this that I have been coveting, but these are actually kind of nice. I appreciate that they're real sweaters. They're real knit sweaters. They're not just hoodies with print on them. 
which I have definitely seen some really, really cool sweaters, clicked on them to like try to purchase them and then seen that it's just printed on. And I'm like, what's even the point then? A sweater, the fun, part of the fun of a sweater is it's a sweater. It's like, oh, grandma knit me this sweater, but it's actually the Imperium of Man's Aquila. That's funny. That's a funny concept. Or, you know, my grandma knit me this sweater of the Red Gabo. That is awesome. I actually think these sweaters are pretty darn cool. I don't know. I don't know. <sighs> the Orc one is really, really good, but the Imperium of Man one is also really, really good. Too bad there's not a Space Marine on it. I think if there was a Space Marine on it, it would really, really just put it over the edge. Instead, it's just got a whole bunch of skulls. It does have Space Marine helmets. And I do like that it is a little Christmassy. Like, if you if you wore this to Christmas dinner, people might not get it right away. They might not even notice the whole... Grandma's not going to pick up on that that does not Santa on there. And I think that that is wonderful. But yes, good old, good old uh, Games Workshop 40k sweaters and good old scented candles. Definitely going to need to get myself some Tau Ethereal Pheromones because that is awesome. Wouldn't it be great if these were like those Harry Potter jelly beans that like taste rancid? Like what if these all smell awful? Honestly, that would actually be like a plus. I think that that would be hilarious if they were stinky candles. But that is what I've been working on this week. I didn't get a lot of painting done because perhaps I'm working on a lot of behind the scenes stuff. Maybe even some battle report related stuff. <gasps> oh yeah, we're doing battle reports. And if you want to see battle reports and if you like all the videos we make, don't be afraid to support us over on Patreon. Over there, you're going to get access to some behind the scenes, voting on what models I paint live here on YouTube, a live hobby hangout every week, terrain STLs, and more. But with that said, it is now time to move on to the story portion of this show. This show is called Models and Memories Weekly, and that is because of the relationship between memories and the memories held within our models. And this week, I want to talk about a memory that had recently come back to me when we redesigned this set. To fill up space on the set, Nick and I took all of our old boxes, and Nick had some of these older Start Collecting boxes that had painted covers. And I super, super love the painted covers. I remember, I don't know how old I was, maybe nine or 10 years old, maybe younger, but I remember being in a toy store and seeing Warhammer products, but this is way back in the day where they all had painted covers. I think even the normal boxes had painted covers. And I love the painted covers. And I really wish they could somehow retain that. I think Games Workshop has some of the worst boxes in the business. I think Star Wars Legion has unbelievably beautiful box art. Malifaux has unbelievably beautiful box art. And that is because they're paintings. They're renderings of what you get. And I think that the renderings are a lot more artistic and they get the creative juices flowing a lot more than just Yes, here is exactly what comes in the box. 10 Space Marines, a Dreadnought, and a, com and a Commander. It's, I understand, maybe from a business aspect, it's always better to be 100% transparent. Ha, Games Workshop. 100% transparent that what you see is what you get. But I feel like these, these boxes are really kind of what, what sparks my creative juices flowing. And, and it gets a rumbling and the tumbling. I mean... Look at how cool that is. And to be fair, no, the models don't really look like that. They don't, they're not that cool. But in your mind, they are that cool. Your mind fills in a lot of the blanks. I mean, when you're playing a game and you're rolling dice, you don't, you're not thinking about you standing there and your feet kind of hurting and you're rolling dice. You're thinking about your space marines charging into combat with chain swords flailing and bringing them down on some filthy Tau heads. And I think that painted box, art, box arts are much better than the normal box arts. And I remember little, little me looking at Tyranids. And I didn't even know they were Tyranids. I just, I, I just wanted them. And I remember having the Tyranid box and looking at all of the cool models. And I remember I had done some model kits, never completed any, but I had some hot glue, some tanks that I would put together with hot glue because that's what you use when you're a little kid is you use hot glue to build your models. And so I had like literal piles of tank bits hot glue together. And so I'm like, I'm ready for, for this. Uh, my mom probably smartly decided that no, I could not get the uh, the Tyranid Warriors. But these 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 boxes really brought me back, and I wish I wish they could do it. They do it on their limited limited edition boxes, their big boxes. They have beautiful beautiful art on the covers. But no, for for store display purposes, 
they always have the boring old and often changing uh, models that are like poorly photoshopped into like a Lego background or poorly photoshopped onto just a black void or poorly photoshopped onto a white void or they seem to change it all the time and it never gets better, it just changes. But yeah, I these boxes are super cool. I wish I still had mine because these are, are Nyx Orcs and Nyx Dark Eldar. I had Space Marines and Necrons and uh, I wish I had those, but I'm, they have been lost to time. But it was fun taking a little trip down memory lane, seeing these pop up on the shelves. Very, very neat. And I know you do get the art in the codexes or you can just Google it and look at it on Pinterest or whatever, but it's not the same. It's not the same as being, you know, coming home when you got your box and you're gonna make this. You're gonna make this happen on your kitchen table. Look at how cool that is. Look at him. He's just looking there, holding his Sith holocron. It's awesome. 10 out of 10. But that is my story. Little Jay wanting a box of Tyranids, but uh, because of how pretty the box art was. But that'll bring this episode of Models and Memories to a close. And now it's time for the real star of the show, this week's EOB Complete Submissions. We put out a challenge to our community to send us before and after photos of their recently finished models to be immortalized in our videos. If you want to join in the fun, you can submit a before and after photo of your painted mini to our Discord server, which you can find in the description below, or you can post it to Instagram with the hashtag EOBcomplete. Without further ado, let's look at and get inspired by what the folks have finished this week. A Chaos Sorcerer by Mr. French, a Primaris Heavy Intercessor by Dreech, some Chaos Raptors by Moon Kanan, a Tank by Terraforming Studios, a Space Marine Captain in Gravis Armor by Brother Captain Brutus, a Space Marine Captain by Antonio, a Captain America by Kulial, a squad of Gene Sealer Cult Neophytes by Boba Fett IG-88, a Phobos Librarian by Ash Etz, a Tyranid Carnifex by Loyalist Frog, a Necron Chronomancer by Ratstail91, a Redemptor Dreadnought by Yoshi Cage Kira, a Custom Nurgle Demon Prince by Desert Rat 505 a Blood Angels Redemptor Dreadnought by Ocho, an Assault Intercessor Space Marine by Chief's Son is a Grey Knight, some Star Wars Legion Droidicas by Champ Styles, an Evasaur Assassin by Void Null, some Chaos Cultists by Max Latina, some Orc Commandos by Zepp Pike, an Ironclad Dreadnought by Whole It 27 some Beast Snagas by Drab, a Stormcast Yandrasta by Necropixie, a Wargames Atlantic Lizardman by Brugataloda, a Chaos Dragon by Mick Goonem, a Chaos Champion by Temujin, some Assault Intercessors by Trent, a Redemptor Dreadnought by T-Bagger, and a Lord of the Rings Witch King by Anim Nate. Congratulations to everyone for a job well done. It's no small feat to get paint on minis and you all should feel really proud. Nothing gets the hobby juices flowing like finishing a project, and we all thank you for sharing your work, motivating us and the hobby community to paint our plastic. Thanks for sharing. 